Over the past six years of meeting Huntress, I've been asked a lot of questions about how to play her, how to get better with her, and I see a lot of reoccurring themes with what people want to know about her. So I thought it'd be a neat idea to make a video about some of your guys' most asked questions when it comes to playing Huntress. So first off, what are your best tips for beginner Huntress mains? Well, if you're first starting out with Huntress, I wouldn't worry about kills too much. Kills come with consistency. You can't really expect to perform really well if you can't throw hatchets really well. And that's where experience comes in. You need to learn how to throw hatchets better. And how do you do that? Well, if we don't worry about kills and we worry about consistency, it's all about making mistakes. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Instead, build off of them. You mess up a little bit at this rock loop, at this pallet loop. So next time you're at that loop, don't fix it. it adjust your play style and try to slowly but surely adjust in a way so it doesn't happen in the future. Maybe run extra oh. hatchets. And when it comes to throw style, I'd recommend trying to predict where the survivors are going. If you see a survivor heading in one way, maybe try to throw a hatchet to try to cut them off and learn how to get consistent at doing this at all ranges, at loops, anything. It really helps. And on the topic of hitting hatchets, do you have any tips for landing cross maps? So something that really helps is running aura reading perks, in particular, frost map aura reading perks, such as barbecue and chili, bitter murmur. Those are really nice for hitting a moving target. But let's say you're first starting out with Huntress and hitting a moving target is really difficult for you. What I'd recommend starting with is running survivor gen reading perks. For instance, discordance that shows you a notification when two people are on a generator. Tinkerer that shows an explosion when a generator is at a certain progress amount. Gearhead, showing you the ore of a survivor when they hit a good skill check. And even maybe Nurse's Calling. It all boils down to consistency. You need to learn how to hit your hatchets first. And the best way to practice hitting your hatchets is on stationary targets. People doing generators that are far away or people healing within a certain fixed range. How can you expect to hit cross maps if you can't even hit somebody sitting still? First, practice on a target that is sitting still and then slowly but surely transition to more advanced targets. Maybe with I'm all ears that show the aura when someone fast vaults a window, bitter murmur where auras are revealed when someone finishes a janitor, or even barbecue and chili. Once somebody gets hooked, the auras are revealed for survivors outside of a certain range. Start with the basics on stationary targets and gradually increase the difficulty to harder targets. And this is a way to learn how to cross map more easily. What are the best perks to run on Huntress? So I mentioned this in my guide. At the end of the day, gen slowdown is usually the strongest on any killer. And this being no way out, corrupted dimension, ruin undying, pain resonance. I'm not entirely sure about pop goes the weasel, but that's okay. That is if you're playing for kills. But if you're playing to improve and play Huntress with a very cross mappy play style, I'd recommend barbecue and chili, bitter murmur, iron maiden, discordance and if you're really having trouble with kills maybe throw in a one gen slowdown somewhere in there but the one perk for both beginners and veterans that i can't stress enough about how good it is is darkness revealed when you open up a locker it reveals the locations of survivors around all the other lockers around the map that map wide aura reading on any survivor close to lockers is absolutely huge in huntress and i can't recommend this perk enough it's just that good. Yes, there will be some maps where it won't be that good on, like Rotten Fields, but the fact that it allows you to cross map on indoor maps, particularly the maps that you're weakest at, is priceless in my opinion. And this goes back to the feedback on landing cross maps. Someone that wants to learn how to get more consistent will probably want to use more stationary sniping with the Discordance, the Tinkerer, the Gearhead, maybe a Gen Slowdown if you'd like. And then the more advanced players will run more cross map sniping perks like barbecue and chili, bitter murmur, iron maiden, lethal pursuer, etc. And generally for me, when it comes to if the generators are going too fast, I either recommend a corrupted dimension or no way out. It depends if you are a gen controlly player or an end game player. And speaking of which, why do huntresses run iron maiden? So iron maiden allows you to reload 50% faster. And some people may get confused at this. It just lets you reload your hatchets faster. Why would it help me at all? If I reload 50% faster, 
Maybe I'll be able to reload during a chase and be able to throw a hatchet before a survivor turns a corner because of that extra speed I gain. And maybe that 50% reload just to restock my hatchets will make the difference between a generator popping or a survivor not being able to make it to a pallet in time or be able to make it to a window in time. Iron Maiden saves seconds throughout the entire match, thus allowing you to micro more effectively and be able to kill people faster with a higher damage per second. You kill more survivors, you kill more efficiently, and it's like a massive upgrade to the base kit. And some people may ask about Deerskin Gloves. Deerskin Gloves is pretty good, but Iron Maiden is just nuts. Is it better to melee or throw a hatchet when a survivor is up close? Um, so it really depends. I'm assuming people ask about melee hatchets. Let's say there's a fully healthy survivor in front of you. What do you do? Well, you can throw a hatchet at them and you could M1. That's the fastest way to down a survivor. But if you want to have a chance at downing a survivor in all cases, let's say they can make it to a pallet, let's say they can make it to a window, sometimes you can't get the M1 off. Maybe throwing a hatchet and then throwing another hatchet is the way to go if one of those chase breakers is nearby. So let's say a survivor is in front of you, you only have one hatchet and they can make it to a window. Maybe you M1 the survivor to injure them and then go for a hatchet play. So this allows you to have an opportunity at very least to down the survivor that you're chasing. Usually people will say to throw a hatchet first in melee because that's just the fastest way to do it. But some it's not always the best way. It all depends on the scenario that you're in and the position of whether this rubber can make it to safety or not. So if they can make it to safety, rely on hatchets. If they can't make it to safety, a hatchet and an M1. So why do you flick your hatchet so much? When I'm chasing survivors, they're usually experienced. These players have faced me a lot. And the direction at where I'm facing with my hatchet gives the survivor a lot of information. Um, if I'm aiming this direction, they're probably not going to want to run into where I'm aiming. So what I do, let's say this is right over here. I'm aiming facing this way. I flick to try to make it so that they can't react to the shot that I'm throwing. So the survivor can be like, oh, he's aiming over there. I'm going to avoid that. I make a split decision so quick that the survivor can't out predict what I'm going to do. It's to catch them as off guard, to make sure there's no room for hesitation and to keep them guessing when I'm making a cross map snipe on them. It's like trying to out predict someone that's trying to out predict you and taking that visual power away from them by getting in their head with reaction time. What's the best sensitivity for Huntress? I actually use the most common sensitivity in the entire game, default. 50 in-game sense, 400 DPI. It's the most comfortable sensitivity for flicking for me. When it comes to other players on what's the best sensitivity for them, I would say if you feel like you're comfortable at flicking a hatchet, it's probably a good sensitivity. If you can't flick a shot, then it's probably either too slow or too fast. For controller players, I recommend using the highest sensitivity you can to comfortably flick. Sensitivity is all about comfort. The better your sensitivity feels while moving and aiming, the better off it'll probably be for you. And this is different for everybody. There's no one shoe size fits all in this respect. Do you use a crosshair? I do use a crosshair, mainly for consistency. It's something that I use to try to learn to aim, and I just kind of kept it on ever since. It makes it easier to throw cross map shots to read chat if I'm streaming. In regards to whether you'll be banned or not for using a crosshair. If I use tape as a crosshair, is it considered cheating? I mean, we won't ban you, but you are going to hell. I was referring to using a program for a crosshair like Crossover, or even a built in one that may come with gaming monitors. Vincent replies, thank you for getting back to us. Please know that as long as you have not changed anything with the in-game files, there's no need to worry about getting banned. If you're not using a crosshair, I recommend using the top of the axe to find the horizontal center and using the HUD for throw a hatchet to find the vertical center. Connecting those two together, get a visual for the center of the screen. How do you throw over rocks and hay bales so consistently? Well, again, crosshair does help, but this is something that is technically you kind of need to get a feel for. When it comes to throwing over a rock, getting an arc shot over an obstacle can help a lot as it's a U shape, allows you to hit somebody that's essentially ducking behind an object. If you can see the survivor's head popping up out from the top, you usually can throw a fully wound up hatchet survivor behind an obscured object. 
I like to combine flicking when it comes to these objects so that the server doesn't have the reaction time to crouch down. They don't really know when I'm going to release the hatchet, which allows me to get the connection off, whether that be a down or an injury. If you're having trouble aiming over an object, it's better to aim a little bit higher than what it feels like it should be. And if you throw a little bit too high, okay, adjust a little bit lower and just a little bit lower. It's better for your hatchet to have air time rather than exploding on an object in front of you. And what I found over time is that by throwing over objects with the feeling of, wow, this is a little bit too high, I actually started hitting survivors. It's like, oh, this is actually the height I'm supposed to be throwing at. And now I just hit the shots consistently over them. What are the best add-ons to run for Huntress? I think this question heavily is reliant on how experienced you are. If you're a newer player, you probably want to use infantry belt and leather loop, run extra hatchets to have more opportunities to throw, become more consistent at your shots. The more shots you take, the more practice you get, and the more experience you get allows you to get better over time. If you're a more mid or experienced huntress, I recommend running glowing concoction to be able to see the auras of the survivors that you hit. Maybe run that with lethal pursuer to get seven seconds of ore reading instead of five. Exhaustion is really nice. Another surprising pick that is quite good is Wooden Fox. Um, this makes it so that you're undetectable when you reload your hatchets. And even though you have a lullaby, it really does catch survivors off guard because they don't really know what direction they're coming from. Survivors usually use the heartbeat as a reference of how close the killer is since the lullaby is so big. And I'll be honest with you, basically all of Huntress's add-ons are just really solid and just really good. Everyone knows about Babushka, Monograss for faster wind-up time, Oak Haft for faster cooldown rate, and Rose Root for faster hatchet travel speed. In my opinion, the best add-ons to run on Huntress in general is Babushka and Rose Root, a faster wind-up time and a faster traveling hatchet. Basically the add-on combo that allows you to release a hatchet the fastest you possibly can, dealing the most damage you can in the shortest amount of time that you have. Faster wind up, faster hatchet travel speed, the fastest way to kill survivors and down them. But as a side note, the rose root and the yellowed cloth take a little bit of time to get used to. So these were the top 10 questions I've been asked after having 9,000 hours in Dead by Daylight in six years on Huntress. I hope that this video helped you guys out. I hope it helps you guys get better at Huntress and I hope you guys learned something from it. Thanks for watching.